Cloud9 have a nice success rate nice. on this map. Optic Gaming yet to find consistency on the new lineup. But to see how well they can do today, they will be starting off on the CT side, which I'm sure many teams tend to prefer. Nice. Quick pop flash, quick push into the B-bomb site for the plant. Dude, Tracks got the salad done, don't see that much these days. An exchange of bullets and faces, and that exchange will continue. But Rush, he's got the high ground for his team. That one tap is Duck McGurt, but he's going to leave Shroud alone to try and touch things for his side. Double peak coming in, he knows where all the CTs are now, but his cover is limited. That said, still getting the kills. Going to for one versus one now. Nap, really, you want to play your numbers advantage here? And indeed, they will do that moving together as Shroud goes to collect the bomb. Both CTs on the high ground, and again, he's got structures, he's got opportunity to get himself some one versus one. Spaces with the flash, they're blind. Isolates Naf, but Naf will isolate his head from his shoulders, giving Optic the round. Yeah, pretty classic pistol. Nothing too remarkable. What, like, what is a classic pistol? There is no classic pistol. Well, just the flash and run into the bomb site. Oh. It, wasn't, it wasn't elaborate, it wasn't it's no novelty that just pretty pretty standard you are a novelty then i am and i am <laughs> you're, like I a, am. you're a novelty gnome you're like a gnome with glitter on we have double scouts Ooh, oh, oh my god oh that hurts so much you're right then three players basically just put the 5 hp sub 5 hp with two grenades that is I was looking at this round, I'm like, oh, it's two scouts, we've got, got some pistols, we've got Kevlars, I'm excited for this round. And my excitement was blown up just as the Cloud9 players were by those well-placed grenades from Optic Gaming. Although Stewie's still alive, he's keeping the scout dream alive, man. But here comes Mixwell to crush dreams, to shatter them. Oh, okay. well, Jordan. it is he that will be splattered all over the floor there, courtesy of nothing's Deagle. And now... There's actually a chance in this round. They picked up a UMP. Rush, how far are you willing to commit? Ooh, that didn't look nice. <laughs> Aim punch, like a right hook to the jaw. I got a right hook to the jaw once in MMA class. It was not a comfortable experience, it must have been. So, Mr. Gilbert has Kevlar. He has an opportunity to head towards the B bomb site, and indeed he will do that. And he has a UMP. He has reasonable penetration versus armor, and he has an open plant. He could be anywhere apart from upper B, where the CTs are. As he saw, he cancelled his reload. He, he doesn't want to reload his gun. It takes too long, and it may com compromise his position. 23 bullets will be enough. And again, he's got the entire length of the bomb site to play with because of the, uh, the plant he has chosen. He has selected... Oh, he had to jump on Naf. He should have got the kill there, but no. Naf, like, with 4 HP, does the spinner Rooney, the 180, and takes the round. You hate to see it. Has the jump on him, shooting from behind, but doesn't quite get the kill. 4 HP left on Naf. He actually had a great chance of winning the round. If he gets that kill, he can pick up the incendiary from Naf, and Rush doesn't have a kit. So, unfortunate for nothing. But... That's round number two for Optic. And Conan actually forces into this one, knowing that they did put pressure on Optic's economy, but Optic has uh, an insane buy. Have all the nades, so it's going to be very, very difficult for Cloud9 to actually win this round. They are setting up for an outer execute, it seems like. Holding for now. Um, they do have a decent amount of utility on Skadoodle, Shroud, and Automatic. So, they can make something happen. They need to get close. Tech Nines are in tow. The scouts, uh, well, it would be amazing for them if they could get the scout to pick people off from a distance. One question that, that uh, we've had on train so far today is how the T-side deal with Pop Dog. Seems to be harder to get down the ladder. And there's one CT waiting. And if they can't force him away from that position, then what does that mean for the main players? Sub 60 seconds to go. Right, the grenades are readied. They are tossed. 
And Stuik will push in and absolutely annihilate two players immediately off the entry. Stunning stuff. And we have Optic left in a dazed position, reeling al already since the, those two kills have created a lot of openings. They can play off of each other around the bomb train, though. We can see they're sort of in the same level here, but Mixwell just getting naded and shot out of position. And Naf now is alone. He has to do it all alone. And Skadoodle with a swift shot to his face with, from that scout is going to allow Cloud9 to take the round. But what an entry, and, and here it is. Beautiful. That, that is insane. To be fair, he, he hit great timing uh, for the first kill as uh, the Tarek was just throwing the nade and, and wasn't really holding mid. But a great explosion play from Cloud9. Despite Optic having four players in the outer bomb side, two players close to Pop Dog, they still managed to take control of Yard and, and close out the round. And as we said, Optic's economy was very low and now they're forced to eco. A quick tag already from Skadoodle onto Naf, which is always nice. Nice. And they just wait for those entries to come their way. And there's one, Naf. We'll get caught out. More players on the center of these tees. It's Tarek moving in with a close range kill. Although, nice response here from nothing. Just a couple of players left at this point. And it should be pretty easy for Clowman to clear this up. And indeed, that will be the case. Jason Nardi. And you pick up the new in-game leader of Optic. His Peter 50 shenanigans are something of <laughs> something fearsome, but he will eventually be eliminated. Decent damage done, three kills, considering the investment. But that will be it. Two versus a uh, two, 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 two rounds to Cloud9, two rounds to Optic. Here. <laughs> Suddenly uh, having great trouble saying this, James. Please help me. I thought, I, I didn't know where you're going. Two all. Two, 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 two all, there we go. Are you talking about Overwatch? Two Jesus. all. <coughs> That's a nice match. I've nice. done it. Two apiece. Two all. Yeah, I've, I've got no other. Two to two. <coughs> two, two. Toe to toe. Toe to toe. Great. Two, two. Desmond, two, two. Desmond, two, two. Yes, we can make it Desmond, two, two. GG's. Right there, Desmond, bloody two, two. He was a beast. Who's that? Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know. Let me let me look at, let me look up. <laughs> okay. I mean, well, okay. I, I do. Well, look, shut up. Social rights activist James. The, what I meant to say was, let me look up a brief description of who he is. Desmond Tutu is a South African social rights activist who retired and retired Anglican bishop. He rose to worldwide fame during the 1980s as an opponent of a There you go. Man like Desmond Tutu. That's where we are right now. <laughs> We're rolling like Desmond Tutu. It's an educational show. Some of the time. So three <laughs> CTs left with their pistols, and Cloudline have taken a very slow approach this round. Of course, giving James Apple time to Google and reel off the, the description of Mr. Desmond Tutu. And that's just Naf remaining. Has himself a piece of 50. And he can, you can run in now, Naf. You can just, just do it, mate. Just get in there. Do you know who my new favorite person is, James? Desmond Tutu. No. Jack Bauer. No. Um, is it Jack Bauer? No. Who is it then? Prince Philip. Prince Philip. Which one is that? Is it a ginger Duke one? Duke of Edinburgh. Is he a ginger one? Oh, no, no. Is that the Queen's husband? Yes. Oh, really? Why? Yeah. Because he has the most amazing quotes in the world. In the world, because he's just the husband of the queen, and he doesn't care. He just he just has the most ridiculous comments in public that I've ever seen. For example, when a man opens a car door for his wife, it's either a new car or a new wife. <laughs> <laughs> just, just ridiculous. That is, that is Back to Counter Strike. Gun round for Opti Gaming AWP on Mixwell. Four and four. Only one incendiary on Jason. That might prove tricky if Cloud9 goes for a late execute. But it seems like they're going right out of team mid. Or no. It's a bait. Oh, even you got baited. That's a pretty good bait. Joe baited. Now they're just holding, expecting maybe Optic to go for a push. You can see the two players in anti-flash positions. Skadul was in Ivy, to, towards Ivy, trying to get a pick. Now he's falling back to 
towards his teammates. Pop flashes for them. Mixo in a good position. Gets the kill on Stewie. Rush gets the kill on Automatic. Cloud9 trying to get out of team mid. Not able to do so just yet. We have nothing from Ivy on the flank. He gets the kill on Mixo. Doesn't get the kill on Tarek. 1v4 situation for Skadoodle now. Gets the first one, but his position is known. He doesn't have the bomb. He turns the side, but that's not going to help him all too much. You can do it, Yanko. You can continue. Let's Still, go. Thank you, Dan, for doing this to me. He, he spots leg. a player, but he's waiting, trying to find someone overextending. Picks up the C4. Sees the player in heaven, gets the kill on him. 1v2 situation now. He is being Tarek on the flank, and he cannot run away from Jason. Very sad. Now you can talk, Dan. Nice. Please. We need, we need another quote, Yanko. Well, another quote. Um, I need to find some that are more PC than the ones I know. <laughs> three all. Right, three to three. Cloud9 with a full buy, the fullest of buys. A good damage at the end of the previous round from Skadoodle, despite them losing the round. And we'll see Cloud9 spreading out here. They don't have any alley presence straight down into the drop, or rather the pop dog area. For some reason, I keep calling it drop lately. I don't know why. My it brain is, is reasonable. Oh, 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 that's it. Oh, sorry. Automatic, slightly damaging shroud there, but he will forgive him as long as he can make the kills happen as they start to progress onto the bomb site. Skadoodle with some good covering fire on the AWP at long range, and the bomb will be planted. Oh, it will not be planted. Denied by Naf. He heard the bomb getting planted. He had a slight angle on that, and now his automatic tries to plant it in some spot. There's still the cover on Ali from Jason R. They had not. They needed, needed just one more kill, really. And Mixwell will hold it down against Skadoodle there. And that will be another round. Four to three, and that should indeed break Cloud9. They haven't really got enough money to buy. They really needed a bomb plant there. But they will be denied. Stewie Suke's name reminds me of, like, hacker handles from more than ten years ago. It was really funny to me. Hacker handles? Yeah. I'm trying to remember one. No, I, I, I knew a guy who had 2K on the end of his name. But uh, enough about that. I was in a clan once called 2K. There you go. And 4K. And also 4K, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's when you <laughs> evolved. Yeah. From 2K to 4K. That's true, actually, yeah. Now you're at 4K a day. <laughs> <laughs> this is the cloud nine side. It's weird, we always try and talk at the same time sometimes. Yeah, I know. I think maybe it's because uh, when we try cars sometimes. It's because we're the same person, Dan. <laughs> we, are the same person. We, are, we are too extreme with one personality. <laughs> I'm an aggressive maniac, and I guess you're just a nice guy. Five to three. <laughs> Not wanting to, I don't want to pitch into this. <laughs> so Cloud9 with uh, just full buy here. They're gonna get themselves onto the five AKs. No AWP. Didn't really have. I guess well they could. I think some one of them could have bought one. I'm not entirely sure. Either way, the full AK does afford them uh, other options, just more dynamic play styles, faster play styles, or they could perhaps play it very slow. Try to take some map control on Ali. Maybe that is something that, that has been missing from their play so far. Just testing Ali with two to three players, pressuring it away. I think you would want an AWP if you were doing that. That is nice, but you can still do it with uh, a, you know proper use of grenades. However, Cloud9 favoring to have more players towards the pop dog ladder. The bomb is by the dumpster leading into T mid. So we're trying to get a reaction going there on pop dog. Not biting though, optic. It seems as though Cloud9 just setting up the play into A now. Denying optic that info. Towards IV, but it's still, I mean, it's a precarious situation, position for the optic place to be in, and maybe that's why Mixwell moved away towards Connector, away from that smoke, because who knows what can pop around the corner. But at the same time, uh, we've seen the things go wrong for T's around smokes on the, the other side. 
like not towards the site but to the left there where Dewey is aiming with the smoke down there. Things can go strange if the T tries to push through it, so on and so forth. And now there are other off angles and you see Jason, he is going for timing picks rather than holding the angle the entire time, which would be uh, the inferior way to do things. They have 15 seconds. They do have 15 seconds. This is it. It's a 5 and 5 push. And there are 15 seconds. I mean, there's no one dead by 5 and 5. Some are in the B bomb fight, but they're rotating now. And uh, it's quite the gamble play with 5 seconds on the clock. Cloud9 managed to plant the bomb. Four players remaining for both sides. So that's by just flying in. I think he must have jumped by accident. Surely that was a mouth bug. And that leaves two optic players and uh, Cloud9. Only now does Skidoodle get picked off. Leaving three and uh, who knows, maybe that jump from Nath has essentially changed what could have happened in this round. Maxwell forced to run away. Sometimes, I feel like if you if you are a person who uses uh, mouse wheel up as a jump, on some mice, sometimes the wheel can get jammed between two places and then it will randomly move up to the next notch at some point and then that kind of thing happens. You hate to see it. You do hate to see that kind of thing happen. Yeah, so that is true. Very, very close round. Cloud9 taking it uh, to the wire. But they had the molly for, for Pop Dog. That's what kind of prevented Tarek from just peeking and stopping the bomb plant. And uh, this type of a round is very, very difficult to execute. You have to be super methodical, uh, have very good team play uh, to know what your teammates are covering for you, which spots you need to focus on. But if you can master it, it's actually very, very strong and very difficult to defend against. You need to re really be dynamic on your CT side. You need to fight for that map control. Nafi the re-peak after the Molotov, gets the kill on Shroud and gets the advantage for his team. Very, very important round, obviously, for Optic. Another reset round for Cloud9. Both teams, very low on cash. Optic definitely, if they lose this round, will have to eco. So Cloud9 deciding to go for a B execute with a map man down Dan. Yeah, and Mixol will he take a shot through the smoke? Naf will won't land on anything though, except maybe some brick. We've got the bomb getting planted now by Cloud9. They will have a hard time actually pushing forwards because of the poor positioning of players like Nav. You've seen that AWP, oh, just barely missing the shot on Skadoodle there, who is quite quick for the trigger himself, and Automatic chiming in to shut down rotation. Alt Optic still with three players left to go in with this retake, but it's going to be tough. Tarek, certainly the man, the playmaker here in this position. Rush pushes forwards, buys time, buys distraction for Tarek to spray down the remaining two. And the defuse can come in with plenty of time, even without a kit. Pr kind of. Is that a... Second door, or is Mixwell keeping the AK? Second door, there we go. Both collecting a sniper rifle each. So, Optic changing the game, moving into this round. The round where Cloud9 are likely to be, well, let's see, two of their players have got less than $3,000, and indeed they are going for the buy around the uh, three players with money, it seems. Good deal, does he go AWP, no armor? He does. He'll have to be careful the positions he chooses to take up. It makes uh, a main out of bounds for the time being, at least. We know what grenades can go over there. And despite having two options, again, Optic playing like they used to, really close to the uh, to the T main on the CT side. A very fast start. Tarek to support, allowing Mixwell to become the bait in that position, but Cloud9 then fighting for the A site elsewhere. As I say that, they all get taken down. Two people left with three HP and three people to find. There's one of them, though. He's in a one versus four, actually, and he's killed two of them in quick succession. They know where he is roughly, but again, he could have uh, continued to CT, I do believe. He's got a tight angle. Oh, I think he might have had a superior corner there between him and Naf. And now he's going to reset the situation. Naf jumping past, getting closer to Rush, but I don't think he saw Skadoodle. It's going to take a long time for Skadoodle to walk through this IV position. If he chooses to run, then maybe... Rush hears him. I think he definitely would from where Rush is now. And now Rush is moving away. So again, Skudido with no Kevlar. He is naked. But it looks like he, if he checks his corners properly, then Nafly will go down for free. It looks like he will as well. Ooh, the timing is unreal, but he has the advantage. 
No idea where Rush is, however, and surely Skadoodle's in for a nasty surprise. There it is, Rush putting him out of his misery. Massive damage done by Skadoodle, though. Yeah, he's doing a lot of damage, and it was a good attempt. It's very hard to ever check for the position in hell that his opponent was in. I, I don't think anyone's going to be checking that, really. is so, so difficult on that A-bomb site. Optic with that, that seven rounds on the board now is a really good place to be, and especially now that they're likely to make it eight. They've got the eco to play against. And Cloud9 is having the easiest top. Tarek in a position where he'll hear most of the running. And Naf also able to hear everything, flank if, he, if need be. And Tarek's going to get most of the work done with just uh, the UMP. Nice return kills coming in from Cloud9, but is it going to be enough? Can they get anything else done? Can they actually get a bomb down? That would be fantastic as well. Another frag, actually. P250 comes in all of a sudden. Automatic's created a spot where the round maybe be would become winnable, but he, his guess was incorrect. Naf comes in from the back. Eight to four indeed, but four kills is pretty damn good from that position. I mean, the most important thing is to win the round, obviously, but Optic are losing way too many players. Now they're in a position where they don't even have the optimal buy, right? There's no AWP on Mixfell. Jason is forced to play with a UMP. They do have three kits, two incendiaries, four and four, so it's not the end of the world, but if they lose this round, they're going to be in a very, very tough spot. Cloud9, if they win this round, they have a very good chance of ending it up at eight to seven, which is uh, a pretty good T side, all things considered. All right then, let's see what these teams can bring to the table for this round. Optic off to a great start on their CT side. and Yeah, I do think it's the nature of the map and the, uh, the history between the teams. This is one of the more favorable ones for, the, for Optic in its current iteration. And Braley's not necessarily favor favorable over Cloud9, but just favorable for where they are. Some of the best of their options, in my opinion. I'm liking how Skadoodle is playing so far today. He's getting a lot of action with the AWP. And really making these rounds very close. Even if they are won by Optic, they, they suffer quite a lot of damage all the time. Yeah, Skadoodle is on an AK this time though. And Jason for Optic will be taking a peek, a sneaky peek at the end of alley, looking to see if there's any presence here. Can he get a flank going? He's carefully checking it, taking the risk. Of course, if he gets spotted, if he gets killed in this position, it's gonna be pretty bad for Optic, but he's actually managed to, in a timely fashion, find himself on the flank. This puts Optic in a fantastic position now, as the B rush is about to commence. No rotation though from the CTs just yet because they don't know if anybody's in a main or not and uh, now the info is out. Mixwell caught, maybe getting a, 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 a bit greedy holding the apple there. The trades will continue, Stewie's in the forward position, not going to reveal himself just yet. Oh, but superior angles found from Rush coming out of the back of CT spawn and Stu was not expecting that, that was a low percentage situation, but it might be the one that wins Optic this round. Jordan's seen two of them though. Got the molly as well, but he surely can't go and throw it from the top of the ladder. So how does he make this work? As best he could, but uh, it was in a pretty bad situation. And indeed it will be the ninth round on the board for Optic Gaming. They're really making a nice half out of this. Let's see if they can make it to double figures soon enough. There's money for Cloud9 to go on the buy. I do wonder if it'll be a fast round from them because it's only north, it's only just north of four thousand dollars, so it's not all the money in the world. Yeah, 18 kills on Rush. He's having a he's having a game. I think if anything, Cloud9 has to try and, and go back to that slow playstyle because Optic uh, in Sydney against SK they just got crushed by playing super passive. Um, at not ascertaining more control. So, well, nine, on the contrary, they decide to speed things up. Great pop flash catches Tarek completely blinds, two with the entry kill. Rush trades the kill back. 44 situation, Mixwell 
on to Stewie as things quiet down a little bit. Or but, no. not, but not much. Jordan in the middle of the site, but there are so many angles. I feel like when you're just north of $4,000, teams are encouraged by just the lack of utility on the screen. Like, we've got to go for fast play, guys. We can't, we can't draw things out with the grenades we have and go for double fakes and all that kind of stuff. And now they have even less, 3,400, so uh, it may be a... Maybe a smoke execute on towards the A site to get close with the pistols. Depending on how many tech nines they have. Two shroud on the deagle. Automatic goes for the good old. Not often you see teams uh, buy that, but at least they have two rifles on the five players. Rush once again. Team just fragging his heart out in this one. Looking to try to close down that 11 4 scoreline as the rush comes in. And he's just standing there by Ebox. Another frag for him. Perhaps more in store as the nade sails through the air. In fact, he beats the nade to the punch for the AK. Finally, he'll get eliminated on the trade. But there's still so much work to be done. Nafto comes back in here. 5 HP for automatic to get this round one. And the bomb needs to be collected as well. Plenty of time. But it's all about who can make the right guesses. Which train is your opponent hiding behind. That's the game they're playing. And time is a big consideration. The CT knows what the bomb is. Oh, the peak is good. And NAF will close down the round. 11 to four indeed. 23 kills in this half from Rush. Got to respect that. Yeah, he's delivering for his team. Absolutely so. Also, you need to respect the fact that uh, ECS has a shop right now, and you can buy your swag at shop.csgoleague.com. Boom. Nice. And there's the anchor. Who what? will not get any free stuff from the shop, as Dan already pointed out. I think we pay you enough to, to go and buy your own swag, Yanko. It's questionable. <laughs> <laughs> right then, this is an important... With only, four, with only four rounds on the board, this is a crucial, a critical, a monumental... Pistol round for Cloud9. And they've got four guys in A. What's their plan if it's a B push? That is the question. Skadoodle is miles away from the action. He can take a headshot from there. He'll be fine. Got to be careful though. Jason Mars got the P250, but again, no raid boss. He is just with the P250 on his own. Is Has Jordan got a P250 as well? Is that P2000? It's a P2000. Automatic starting off the proceedings of a headshot onto NAF. Now let's see what Cloud9's retake strategy is. No one from Optic has pushed through the B bomb site, so it's not going to be easy for them. No, it won't be easy at all. Still though, Cloud9, they're pressing for us. A line of five players. A line that might be breached by Taran because he runs straight through the middle of them. Like a the line back, he's doing excellent work from the back, just creating distraction, making the CTs have to look at two fronts. Automatic running out of bullets here, already two kills. Gets his reload in, but the bomb is ticking quite quickly at this point. Detonation is not far off, and it looks like the grave is not far off for automatic either. Rush will close down the round 12 to 4. And if Cloud9 can't win that first buy round, this could be a quick one. This could be brief, like a passing bus, like a bird in the wind, like me in a boat, like Dan in bed. And there it is. That's and there crazy. it is. Cloud Diner with a third wow. of the wow. uh, <laughs> a third of the rounds of their opponent. That's what you get for not giving me swag, Dan. Wow, this is intense. You get, you get bad performances at home. <laughs> well, I'll take. They're coming in and they're clearing up. They are the removal men, and it's Cloud Nine being removed. I'm watching the parasites on the A site, and parasites are being extinguished. They're fumigating the A site, Dan. It's being fumigated. They've got the overalls on. The overalls have badges. They look expensive. This must be a good company. All right. Well, it's buy time soon. We got Nico rounds. Or will they force? Well, okay, they can't. Well, yeah, can't really force it here. So one Nico round indeed. And then uh, that will give Optic 14 rounds unless something untoward occurs, something anomalous. And Optic. They've got, uh, I mean, they have a great position. If they, they have so many options in rounds like this. And even though they've uh, not been together with Jason R for a very long time, you know, we would expect a pretty efficient round here in the anti-eco situation. 
to see Mixwell just jumping straight into the B bomb site. B bomb site is a great choice. Bomb is down. The pressure is on the CTs to try to move out of position. And it's the A yard here where you know where things could get tricky if you were to attack that. All these corners to worry about. But nothing really matters at this point for Optic. They have the bomb down. There is pretty much no way the CTs can make it there to defuse. The They're just going to try to hold on to these guns into the last or well into their first firearm rather to make it a little bit cheaper. The Galil. You don't see the Galil too commonly. It's uh, it's even more even less common than the Famas. And you know, in the wake of the UMP meta, I like the Galil. I think people just need to practice it more. People say it sucks. Yeah, I'm but I'm I think. I think it's the uh, it's the workman rather than so that's good arm penetration. Tool. Yeah, I like I like the uh, girl. I'm good with the girl. Just this because you're not doesn't mean it's bad. Must win round for Cloud Nine to be honest. Won't get another chance to get things going. And they're creeping towards Pop Dog with two plays and other rotations coming in. It seems that Cloud Nine have got some sound cues from the T's while being close to Pop Dog. So they've moved automatic into the and they're keeping Jordan close to the Pope. Skodongle is in the connector position and Trout is just waiting in IV. He's the only person being relatively static. So Cloud9 ready for a rotation. Again, Optic not really hiding the fact that, that they're running around towards B. But again, that is to be expected in part of a default round. And it seems they're going to creep and peek. Will they catch somebody off guard though? That's a meaty flashbang. That's going to force them all the way back up. And I'm going to talk to make tell a story. Here they go. Straight in. Rush. Great entry. At the second entry, blindingly quick. And now they have the entire yard. And the Cloud9 are in this awful situation. Do they just go and save now? Because, well, actually, two quick kills. That definitely changes things. Now it's uh, time to try to make, try to salvage this round. Try to win this round. As Skadoodle makes his way in. But his teammate, nothing's very weak. Skadoodle seems quite aware that there's someone on the flank. Dink comes in, but it's not enough to actually get the frag. And nothing will try to save the AWP that was dropped. This is tough times. Rush, man. This guy just walked in, savaged the defense there. Two immediate entries. Very hard to deal with. 29 kills. 29 kills. 29 kills. Yeah. Unreal. He's taking all the MVPs as well. Oh, there's Nafla, he gets his first MVP. Seven stars. Nafla gets a gold star on his badge. Maybe if he can complete the badge, he'll be promoted to manager. Do or die time for Cloud9. I don't, I don't think it needs to be said at this point. Skidoodle's managed to eke out an AWP. Well, no he hasn't. Uh, that's saved by Jordan in the previous round. Shroud, poor man's warp. The scout. Oh, Skadoodle is so blind, and that AWP is in no man's land. He won't be getting that back anytime soon. And uh, this is pretty much over, it seems. Wow. <laughs> <A> violent, <laughs> well, what do you say end. about that one? Yanko.